All right, picking up here at part two of lesson 10.3.2, picking up with part C of this problem, we're really investigating here uh, what makes something a permutation um, and really what makes it not a permutation and just a list of all possible combinations. Um, and here we're going to look at part C and see if that's a permutation. All right, so Carmen is getting a new locker at school. The first thing she must do is decide a new locker combination. The three number long, or locker combination can be picked from numbers 0 through 35. How many different locker combinations could she create if none of the numbers can be repeated? Um, again, like I was saying in the end of the last video, um, the repetition part of this is big, um, and the order part of it's also big. So by telling me that this cannot be repeated and that there has to be some order, a first number, a second number, and a third number, um, that's telling me that this is a permutation problem. And it looks like it's a permutation problem with three decisions and um, 36 choices because you have 1 through 35 plus 0, uh, which would give you 36 choices. And so I'm going to make my decision chart here for part C. And I have a decision on the first number, a decision on the second number, and a decision on the third number. And what that gives me, like I said, I have 36 choices on that first uh, first number. It could be 0 through uh, 35. Um, after you choose that number, though, you have 35 choices. And then after you choose the second one, you have 34 choices. Um, and again, it's all just because every time you can't have a repetition, it means it has to go down um, one number. So 35 or 36, 35, 34. Uh, decision chart, you multiply through. And so I get 36 times 35 times 34. And I got to bring up my calculator again here. I got to multiply 36 times 35 times 34. That gives me 42,840 possible choices there. Now, um, when I'm writing this as a factorial, again, that looks like the beginning of 36 factorial. And so we have 36 factorial on top. And then we want to cancel everything 33 and below, which would be 33 factorial. And so we have 36 factorial divided by 33 factorial. If you plug that into a calculator, you'll get that same answer as this up here. So that's how we would write it. All right. Um, going on to part D now, we have how many three-digit locker combinations could Carmen make up if zero could only be the second or third number and none of the numbers can be repeated. So again, none of the numbers can be repeated here, um, but we have a little bit of a different thing now because zero could not be used for the first number. So that means, uh, so I'm actually going to kind of make my decision chart here and then talk through what I'm doing. Um, that was, we are now into part D. We're still talking about a locker combination that still has three numbers. And so we still have three decisions to make. A first number, a second number, and a third number for my locker combination. But this number of choices is where things are going to be looking a little bit different than what we saw. Okay? And so um, we look at this and it says we have the first number cannot be zero because zero could only be the second or third number. But that means in that first number, you could pick numbers 1 through 35, which would give you 35 choices for that first decision. Okay? In the second decision now, you cannot have numbers repeat. And so I have chosen a number uh, 1 through 35. That cannot be repeated. But now we have 0 in there. And now you have like, so you have 0 through, I don't know, 1 through 35, or sorry, 1 through 34, because one of those numbers got chose, which means for the second choice, you again have 35 choices. All right. Again, the first one has 35 choices because 0 is not involved. And then that number stays the same because 0 is involved, but one of the other numbers is taken out because you must have chose it for the first part. All right. Then in the third number, say you did choose 0 for the second number. Now it's going to go down by 1. It's going to be... 34 here for the third choice. It's actually it's still a permutation problem um, because we can't repeat numbers and the order is still mattering. It just looks a little bit different in terms of when we um, write this out. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do first is just multiply it out so I get my number 35 times 35 times 34. And if I calculate, sorry, 34, if I calculate this out, I get my number here. 
35 times 35 times 34. I got 41,650 choices under the parameters that they've laid out for us. Now, the factorial part of this is where things look a little bit different. Um, just because we have that repetition of 35 and then 35, and then it would start going down by one each time. And so what we have is we have 35 times now our factorial. All right, so we have 35 from that first decision, and then it's going to be a permutation from there on out. And so what we have then, if we're looking at second and third um, choices here, we have 35 factorial from 35, 34, and then everything from 33 down needs to be canceled out. And so this becomes 35 times 35 factorial over 33 factorial. And even though it looks different and looks weird, we still have a permutation problem because of our factorial part right here. We just have that additional 35 being multiplied on um, from our first decision. All right, and if you wanted to check that number and multiply it in your calculator, it should give you that uh, 41,650 again. All right, now the last one here, part D. So it says, how many possible locker combinations can Carmen have if she can only use, or sorry, if she can use any of the numbers zero through 35 and numbers can be repeated, okay? Is it still a permutation? Explain why you think it is or is not. And I will tell you right now, it is not a permutation because numbers can be repeated. As soon as you see that numbers can be repeated, we no longer have um, a permutation problem. It's still some type of a combination, some kind of arrangement. It's just not what we would call a permutation, all right? And so I'll show you that to you kind of mathematically too. Um, that factorial aspect really, it needs to be followed if this is some kind of permutation problem, and you'll see that that's not followed here. And so we have part E. We still have three decisions. You have a first decision, a second decision, and a third decision. That first decision, you have 36 possible options. The second decision, you have 36 possible options because all those numbers can be chosen again. And the third decision, you have 36 possible options. You don't see that decrease by one, and you don't see that decrease by one because that only happens when repetition is not allowed. All right, and so what we get here is you get 36 times 36 times 36, or in a different way to write that, that's 36 cubed. And that answer gives me, it's not the most crucial thing, but 36 times 36 times 36 gives me an answer of 46,656. So these two answers, that's the answer for all the possible options. And again, this isn't a permutation problem. Um, and it, the, really the big thing here and why it's not a permutation problem is that giveaway here that numbers can be repeated. If you see that numbers can be repeated, we do not have permutation here. Um, we just have a different type of arrangement. You will see though that that 46,000, I believe is the biggest number we've gotten here. 41,000 up here was 42,000. And that's really, that's why that's happening with this locker combination problem is because when you take order, I mean, sorry, when you take, um, or when you put repetition into it, you get more possible choices and it takes away that permutation aspect of it. Um, to keep us on time here, I'm gonna move on to the next one, but that really was just to introduce the idea that permutations look like that decrease by one every time. And so when we don't have that decrease going, we don't have a permutation. We'll get a little bit clearer here with the 10, uh, 10 123, okay? So problems about the order of teams winning, or sorry, an order of teams or winners, and questions about how many numbers you can make without repeating any additions, uh, re repeating any digits, sorry, are called permutations. And so now we have below is a list of license plate, uh, license plate letter triples that can be made with the letters A, B, and C. All right, and we see this list of numbers being able to repeat like AAA, um, BAA, um, BBB, CCC, we see that repetition. We don't, these are not our permutations here. So then it, what it's going to ask us is, how is this list different from an arrangement of a child who can make a line on the refrigerator door with three magnets, letters A, B, and C? So really we have three magnets. One is A, one is B, one is C, which means we couldn't repeat letters A, we can't repeat letters B, and we can't repeat letters C. So we're going to see if we can just make a list of these arrangements and then talk about what's different. Okay, and so part A here, you have A, you could have A, B, C as one of your arrangements. You could have A, C, B as one of your arrangements. You could have um, B, A, C. 
as one of your arrangements. You could have BCA as one of your arrangements. Uh, you could have CAB or you could have CBA. I believe that's all the possible arrangements there. All right, and again, uh, if we're talking about magnets, that's the only ones we could do because we can't have that repetition here. And so then we have this big long list and now we have our shorter list and it's asking us which one of these is a permutation. Well, our second list here for um, part A is gonna be our permutation because it has to follow that order or it has to follow the rules that we cannot repeat and the order still matters. All right, and so again, just trying to reinforce that idea that a permutation usually is a shorter list because we have to add the parameters of no repetition and we still need order to matter. Okay, and so we'll go to B here and it says, imagine a group of eight candidates. One will become president, one will become vice president, one will become secretary of the school sen uh, senate. Now imagine a different group of eight applicants, three of whom will be selected to be on the spirit committee. Which, will, uh, which list will be longer? Sorry, which will the lists of the three possible people um, selected from the eight people different? Which list will be longer? Which is a permutation? This question really leads into an idea that will be explained further tomorrow. Um, and really what's happening here is in the first part where you have a president, a vice president, and a secretary, um, order matters because every like order, um, you have the president, you have the vice president, and you have the secretary, so there's positions given away, which means the order matters. Whereas in the second one, where everybody's just going to be on that same spirit committee, the order doesn't matter in which they're chosen because the role doesn't matter. All right. And so there's going to be a difference there. And I'm going to just keep this one brief because we'll explain it further tomorrow. But since order matters in the first one um, and order does not matter in the second one, believe it or not, the second one, um, the second option is going to be shorter because order doesn't matter. And this is, that's the idea leading into this idea of combinations. So the second list would be shorter than the first because the second one is a combination. Again, we'll go further into detail with that tomorrow. Um, and the first one, the second list is shorter, but the first one is the permutation. All right, the first list where you have the secretary and the president, that list, uh, the first one is a permutation. OK. Um, and again, it's a nice problem because it introduces like the two different questions that could be raised. The second one would be like a combination problem. The first one would be a permutation problem. Um, and we won't really calculate that out, but we just want to see that idea that separates the two. And it's really just this. It's a small change in the wording here that really changes it. All right. Um, moving on to C, we have two different situations here. Uh, we decide if they're permutations, why or why not. So uh, the first part here in part C, the possible four digit numbers you could write if you could choose any digit from numbers two through eight um, and you could uh, repeat the digits or you could use the digits several times that tells me that c that first part in part c so c number one i guess um, is not a permutation is not a permutation uh, because it said in there that numbers could be repeated and if numbers can be repeated, it's not a permutation. Um, all, so the second part, all four digit numbers, you could make using seven square tiles numbered seven through eight. Um, if you have seven square tiles and you're choosing them, um, that means that you couldn't repeat them because you would have, you would take one of the tiles, you would take maybe tile two, and then you couldn't reuse that tile, um, which tells me that we're talking about four digit numbers where you can't repeat. Um, that is a permutation. So C part number two, is a permutation. I'm trying to just again really hit home that order for a permutation to be a permutation, order matters, um, and so does the you cannot repeat. That also matters. All right, lastly, it says what are the important characteristics that our counting problems have to order to classify permutation? Um, and really, I'm just going to put it in writing for part D. If it is a permutation, so if it's a permutation, The two big things that need to happen, one, no repetition, that's a big part of it, and then two, order matters. Those two things, if they are met, you have a permutation problem. Um, that's the end of that problem too. I will pick up with 10-124.
um, in the last video. Should be short.